this scholarship that we want to present would be about $500 because with open enrollment at Northeast State, which is where we started with, we started from the top and we're working on them. Uh, at Northeast State, 500 will pretty well take care of a lot of fees, books, uh, various other expenses because the open enrollment is there. When we did the, when we started the uh, scholarship at Chattanooga State, there was no open enrollment. So we were able to, with both of us working, <clears throat> we were able to give, uh, I, I forget how many years it took us to build up somewhere close to 10,000. And we were able to start to give scholarships when we got it to the endowment build up enough so that we could pay. So a few, depending on the uh, return on investments, sometimes we were able to give as much as a thousand. Most of the time it averaged out to about 800, which is a pretty good get money for uh, community colleges. So it started in uh, 90, 1994 was, 1994 was the first time we were able to offer it and it's still going, it will go on forever because right now I think it's about 17,000. So that money will produce scholarships from now on, long after we're gone. And that is a kind of legacy that makes us feel good because the, the important thing about educators, if you affect lives, that's what we're in the business for. But the persons we want to honor <clears throat> is my parents. When Jim's parents, uh, Jim's father passed away about the time we started paying into the foundation at Chenick State. So he named that scholarship after him and then his mother passed away after that. So his parents' names are on that one and it will go on. The, we got the idea of doing one at Northeast State. First of all, the president there is a friend of his, they worked together. Uh, we started with Paul Montgomery, who was uh, over the that development part, and they were very glad to know that we would think of doing something like this to help students above and beyond that open enrollment policy. My uh, father was poor. I don't mean just <laughs> slightly poor, very poor. Born on Gracie Creek, grew up between Gushin and North Fork. Uh, I already told you he was a hyperactive, was not, was not, did not have the opportunity to go to high school. He helped his family, helped his brother go on to college. Uh, but he finally got on at Eastman. But he read a lot. Uh, he was intelligent and read a great deal. The complicated math that he had to use at Eastman without even adding machines back then. Astronomy, uh, NASA, uh, his Bible and all the notes and the, the deep studies that he did in his Bible is still in the uh, lobby of, of his home church. The incorporation of the city of Church Hill, he went to one little lady that was really scared. The incorporation really upset her. And the first thing they did with the money that they got from the state, first thing they did was pay some of the streets because people could see that. So the first thing they did is pay some of the streets. As soon as they got one pay, they got dry enough. He runs against that little lady and he takes her and drives over that street. And she cried because she could see where this was really going to work out right. It wasn't going to be something to be scared of. Uh, the uh, incorporation went in, Mr. Robert Montgomery, S.L. Taylor, Clay Johnson, Lee Street, my father, and Harley Penley were elected. And Mr. Penley, who had the appliance store in town, he did not, because he got the most votes, they were, they were all real close together. He did, did not want to, and I, I'm not, not sure what they call the uh, <coughs> arrangement, the city commission or something, but anyway, they chose who the mayor would be. And because my dad had worked so hard and, and uh, Mr. Penley did not, he was still working on his business, he was elected the first mayor of Churchill. So that was 
Son could to be very proud of for a poor kid from a family of 17 children. <laughs> Same mother, 17 children. And, and uh, to, to be able to do that, to come from that, and not even have a high, high school education, and self-educated. And, and 31 years of Eastman, widowed at 65, finally had to stop driving. Uh, the uh, hometown of Turner watch after him after he had to stop driving. He walked two miles a day until he was past 90 years old, and then he had to spend the last four or five years in a nursing home. But uh, uh, he he was he want, he would not go with us to Jamie, but he wanted to stay in his hometown, and he wanted to stay in the nursing home because of half the staff and half the patients were friends and relatives as his. So that's just the way things worked out the way he wanted to. My mother grew up in Goshen Valley. They did have a farm, but the, the, the strips never even owned a square inch of land in their life. They were just sharecroppers. But uh, she moved, they moved to Kingsport when she started high school. So while she was there, she only got to go two years, freshman and sophomore year, and then they moved back to the valley. But she never let me forget that when she was in high school, they called it Kingsport High School then, while she was there for two years, Bobby Dodd, the Georgia Tech coach, was in her class. So that was her claim to fame <laughs> as far as, as uh, high school is concerned. Uh, she uh, worked at the Kingsport Press as soon as she was able to get on there. And then after marriage, then uh, she started working in the cafeteria in the bottom of that old Churchill Elementary School. You know, it was three stories on that end facing the town. And it was down in a basement kind of a thing. But all of those years, all the years I was in school, she was a substitute teacher and worked in the cafeteria off and on, back and forth, depending on her health and, and, and time constraints. Uh, the, you know, when you get a substitute teacher that's really good and can discipline and can carry on with the work, you know how it is, you, you work them to death. You can't, you call them every day. So she, uh, did that a lot of years for a lot of times. And then she ended up being supervisor of the cafeteria. And she and Ms. Poe, which was uh, Coach Mike Poe's mother, they kind of swapped out because they did a few years and then they get tired and the other one did a few years and so on. So that went on the whole time that we were in high school. She was the first librarian at Church Hill, the, uh, the rural, What's the term? <laughs> the truck would come with the books from the library of Rogersville, the rule. And, and uh, so the first library that we ever had in church, you know, well, she was the one that did it. Not trained, just self, you know, just, just learned how to do it out of necessity. The scholarship to be named after those two people to be able to do so much with so little. And, so a little opportunity for education and so on. That's what we want to honor as Jim did his parents.